Welcome to the Healthy Perspective Podcast with your host, chiropractor, entrepreneur, mentor, and author, Dr. Chris Bowman. He'll break down and extract the secret sauce behind his own success and the success of some of the top leaders in every category and from around the world. Get ready for your weekly mental adjustment because shift is going to happen. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of the Healthy Perspective podcast. Today is going to be amazing. We have another MD on the podcast, which I'm so thankful for. We have Dr. Amy, who is a board-certified preventative and addiction medicine physician with a double master's in biochemistry and public health. She really likes school. Uh, She specializes in trauma and attachment Um, and identifying and reversing the effects of stored emotions in the body and on our health. Having personal experience in foster parenting, which she's going to get into, adopting, um, and then her own chronic fatigue and autoimmune issues, she discovered that negative life experiences become our biology, not just psychology, compromising every system in our body. These stored emotions cause inflammation, digestive issues, and contributes to all disease and aging. Stored emotions become the biggest thief to our health, happiness and aliveness without us ever knowing. Now I'll tell you our first conversation for those of you that that know me as your your chiropractor or read my book or or things like that, you know that those words are sound exactly like something that that I would say where we're not just talking about a symptom. We're not just talking about um, a relieving the symptom or a medication. It's like let's understand health on a global level, on a holistic level. And so when um, Dr. Amy and I got together, I mean, both of us, it felt like we were just talking the same language. And so I'm super excited to bring her in. She is super smart and she has a lot um, to share with the world. And I'm so excited for everything that she's doing um, in the future as well, which we'll we'll, we'll clue you on. So Dr. Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Bowman. And I am not so smart. I just hang around really smart people (laughs) and hope that some of it spreads off to me. you, you are smart. It's, it's okay to say that. You, I'm smart. Um, and so uh, when we met at EAT, we chatted about our, our story. Um, you know, I, I, for people that know me, I'm not an enemy of medicine, but I am consider myself an enemy of the medical system. Sometimes people think that it includes, I don't like MDs or I don't like hospitals or I don't like, um, you know, those sort of things. And, and truth be told, that's not true. Um, I love hospitals and MDs when they're used the way that they're supposed to be used. Um, in emergency situations, if you have a broken bone or a fever of 106, that's not a time to come to me as a chiropractor. It's a time to go get help. And I'm so thankful for the evolution of, of medicine where we have something like antibiotics that can take somebody from life or death situation to overcoming a disease that you know, prior to modern medicine, that person would have died. And so every time I meet up with an MD, I'm a little bit hesitant because I don't know as a chiropractor what they think that I think of them and they think of me and, and whatnot. And, and we were able to just go over that. But when I saw that she had her um, advanced certifications in preventative medicine and, and addiction, I'm like, okay, she probably thinks the way that I think, which obviously is the right way to think. Um, but anyways, Dr. Amy, why don't you just start from the beginning and, and tell us how you got from you know being a conventional you know um, medical student to kind of where you are now focused on, you know, holistic health and root cause approach. I did start with a very conventional pathway. In fact, that was my whole intention from the very beginning. I remember when I first uh, started dreaming of what my life would look like as a doctor, it was literally walking down the streets of Boston, wearing this really dark suit, carrying all these really important papers between the oncology department and the pediatric office, because that was I mean, that's what I saw myself doing is, is really going deep into the sciences. Um, it's partly why I even pursued the master's in public health or not only that, but then the master's also in biochemistry is because I, I love the science. Like I love what science gives us as the potential for um, bringing in new tools for helping people. And so then when I actually got into practice and by practice, I really mean residency, right? Cause that's where you, <laughs> it's where you start seeing patients, even right. though you're being uh, supervised in that, like you are actually the provider. And one of the frustrations was that I really um, wasn't seeing a lot of people getting better. And it was that we were maybe managing things, but that I didn't feel that we were actually helping bring their state of health back to one that was thriving 
that was well. They were being kind of um, managed through life on a ton of different medications. And then when I had my son and I was going to all of the conventional things that were uh, available to um, him at the time and none of that was working, Mm -hmm. then that's when I really um, got my motivation to be like, all right, then I need to figure out what, what will help him, what will work because um, that was my commitment to him, right? When I adopted him, it was, it was under with that level of commitment that I know that this is going to be hard and I'm going to do whatever, whatever I can, whatever it takes to help him be, be healthy, be, be whole. And he was not, he was not that, um, at the time. So he was one, he was the one that opened the door for me to even be willing to look at some of these things that I had just never even considered before. And, and then from there, it's just been an incredible journey because once, once you're open, then you start to have different eyes and you start to see all this other stuff that actually um, are tools that will help people bring them to a level of, of health with, um, without being dependent on things that are um, creating um, it's not, you know, like when I think of medications and again, like there are, there are some medications that are really helpful, but um, I'm thinking of some of the antidepressants, right? Like it doesn't actually create a natural state of health to take a mood medication. It's continuing to alter what is already there. And so um, being able to look at, all right, well, what, what other options do we have here? What other tools do we have that we can use to actually help bring a person's state of health back to something that, that is natural and healthy? So does school teach you to be closed-minded or is that the human condition <laughs> that that influences you know because I, I bet you there's been for for every doctor like you that exercises her medical knowledge and trained you know in conventional medicine doesn't find an answer and searches elsewhere there's probably someone that just puts their head down and say we got to keep researching and continue to do the same thing over and over again so is it is it a personality thing? Is it a pride thing? Or like, what, what is it about m- like medical doctors that come out that stop questioning? Because that, that's really the root of science, isn't it? Is to continue questioning what you're doing to find different avenues of, uh, you know, of, of a hopefully better, safer, healthier. End. My dogs are uh, going crazy at the moment. Oh, okay. For me, actually, it, it was an outflow of my upbringing and my childhood. So my, my family growing up had been very close-minded as well. And so um, it was a natural fit then to go into medicine, which is also generally close-minded. Mm. And, and so again, it took, it, it took an experience um, like my son to be willing for me to break out of that mold because otherwise the easier thing, the easier path is just to continue to, to stick with what you've known and what you've been taught. And when I think back, like even on my, on my upbringing, uh, I was, I was raised in a very conservative Christian home Mm -hmm. where even things like yoga, even things like, um, you know, breathing exercises, meditation, those were things that were actually considered wrong and bad. And so, um, it was, it was very much, it was very much a, um, coming, coming out of that and, and probably a pride thing, right? Because then you think that your way, um, is the right way and everybody should believe the way that you believe. Mm. And so, and so at truly honestly, Dr. Bowman, I am so grateful for the experience of, you know, what ultimately led me to what I call, you know, me being broken, um, in order to be willing to change that mold that Mm -hmm. I had at that time. Cause I don't Mm. think that, I don't think that, anything else would have done that. It really, for me, required um, a, a breaking, a breaking mm. moment. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. And, and you know, I, I think, I, I don't think that's just like you. I think that's like everybody where if you come to the end of your rope right, and, and you don't have anywhere to climb, you don't have anywhere to go, like, you know, it's kind of sad to say, but like almost out of desperation, 
let's yeah. try not eating gluten or let's try not right. having red 40 in my diet or let's try like CBD or, you know, like, like something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it works and, and you get that positive affirmation of like, okay, well maybe there's something, let's research, let's look a little bit deeper. Let's look a little bit more, you know? Um, now your work with, with addiction and, you know, preventative medicine and things like that. How is that talking with people? You know, I, I don't, I know you don't do it as much, you know, right now with, with a lot of, uh, because you do a lot of classes and courses and stuff, but like somebody that has obesity and they want to just go on insulin or this and that and the other thing, you're like, well, have you tried, or somebody that has, you know, um, uh, diabetes or, you know, this and that, and the other thing. it's like, have you tried, is, is, is it the same with patients where they're closed minded to other things might, might work as well? Absolutely. And, um, you know, in addiction medicine, we, we talk about rock bottom and someone having to hit rock bottom before they're willing to make certain changes in their life. Mm. And like you're saying, like, this is almost kind of human nature <laughs> mm. where it may be more obvious and apparent in something like an addiction, yeah. but when we're talking about someone with obesity or diabetes, they also have to kind of reach their rock bottom in order to be willing to consider doing something different than what they've always done before. And this is all where we get into this um, whole fascinating talk topic about the nervous system and about trauma and stored trauma in the nervous system, because um, the more rigid we are, the more that actually is a reflection of the trauma patterns that are in our nervous system. And not that that's anything bad, right? Like this is just life. This is humans. This is the nervous system. And it adapts to our environment in order to help us survive. But that rigidity, that need for uh, like, I, I am right and I'm not going to change or yeah. And, and it's a form of control that actually is just a sign of how much insecurity is wired into our nervous system on a cellular level. Wow. And so it very much is when I'm, when I'm working with someone and I see, I see that, or I even hear that language, that's often where I need to start. Dr. Bowman is let's okay. Let's not even talk about the medication. Let's not even talk about the insulin. Let's not even talk about the diet right now. Let's talk about what, um, to what degree do you feel safe in life? To what degree mm -hmm. do you feel safe in your body? Because when they feel that afraid and in insecure, asking them to make changes is asking them to jump off of a cliff without a parachute. Like right. it can literally feel that scary to their nervous system. And so I need to, I need to show them that, Hey, this is actually just a step and let me uncover the step for you. And mm -hmm. then it's not as scary. And then they're, they're much more able to go there than if I'm pushing them and, and they are um, having to wait until it's rock bottom and really desperate things. And then, okay, I'm willing to make, make a change. Right. So the, the, the longer that a person waits to make that change and the more that they have to wait until things are so bad, that's actually a sign of these types of what I call trauma patterns wired into the nervous system. Wow. And, and I feel like that's, not a CPT code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they haven't put that in the in, in any of the in any of the books, the DSM four either, or that right? Like, no, right. It's, it's it's not there, and that's and that again is kind of coming back to the conversation around my um, my frustration with conventional medicine, and where I saw like the true root cause of most disease. And that's where I actually need to put my efforts to help people, not the downstream effects, which are really just the coping mechanisms to deal with the stored trauma in their body. Yeah. Now, most people that come to you for help, are they at the rock bottom or are they more of like, hey, like I have this family history of addiction. I kind of want to address it now before it becomes a problem. <laughs> um, you're... Uh, no, like there's, there's, I don't know about you, Dr. Bowman, but there's no one that comes to me that's like, Hey, my life is good. And I just want to keep it good. Right. Like my life is good. And let me just, you know, take it to the next level. No, um, at this point, at least at this point, hopefully that'll change in the future. But at yeah. this point people come to you because they're in pain. 
right right and and it and it's all kinds of different forms of pain right yeah. it doesn't that's all not all physical pain right. but they come to us cuz they're they're in pain there's some area aspect of their life that is hurting and is not working for them yeah now do you think that um way of life is more out of convenience and ignorance where it's like I, if i'm feeling good i don't necessarily have a pain point I don't want to go pay a therapist to maybe uncover a problem that I don't know is there. Like if, if let's say something like this was, was free or they could, they could make these changes on their own or something like that. Do you think that would be something that people would pursue? Or do you think people, like we talked about kind of in the very beginning, like people are, are kind of content sitting with the status quo and not, not making, not making changes. So oh, Dr. Bowman, like now you're starting to get into my world because what you're describing is what I call a chronic freeze state. Mm. And this is where people live their life, but they're living their life in a way that they're just getting through life. Mm. And when we're just getting through life, we really pick and choose which things that we want to put our energy to because we don't yeah. feel that we have a lot of extra energy. Right. And so it's, it's very much, uh, um, I'm, I'm just getting through, I'm, I'm, I'm managing and, um, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy to really think about how I could make my life any better. I'm mm. just getting through. Mm. And, and so this is, this is a, um, it's a state of the nervous system. That's not sympathetic. It's not stress. It's actually overwhelm. And uh, there's this dorsal vagal response, polyvagal theory for anybody who might be familiar with that. And this is what it looks like in real life is we just are getting through life. We're just doing the bare minimum to get through life. And when we are in that state, we are never asking the bigger questions of wonder how I could make my life even better. Right. We're just asking, how can I get through the day? How can I get my kids through the day? How can I just get through all of my to-do list? Yeah. And so we're, we're stressed in order to get that done. And then if we ever get that done, then we kind of crash and go into this exhaustion and we right. binge watch movies or Netflix, or we get on social media and just kind of flip and scroll. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the chronic free state looks like. And, and what, what, we're missing out when we live that way is this whole parasympathetic state where you get to be very curious. And this is actually where you're very creative and this is where you feel very connected. And, and so you have all of this bandwidth for saying, not only how can I make my day, my life, myself even better, but how can I really invest in other people mm -hmm. and make their world better? And so those types of questions are, we're never going to ask them if we're not, if we're not in that parasympathetic state. And, and so most, most of us are living in just this, how am I, how do I get through? And so as long as they're getting through that, they're not going to make any change. It's when they've been trying to get through and they're not being successful, that that's when they're willing to make change. Wow. And, you know, you, you just saying that, like, I, I think about, the, you know, this isn't a medical system bashing podcast, but I, but I think about all the interactions that, that I've talked to, and I'm sure you've talked to with patients that have gone to the medical, medical doctor looking for help, and, and they don't get these sort of questions. All they get is, well, is it this much or that much? Come back when it's worse, you know? Yep. And, and we've had, all, or here's a fibromyalgia or a chronic fatigue yep. or a chronic pain diagnosis take your medication and, and move on. It seems like the medical system is stuck yes. in a state of freeze. They're yes. just trying to keep up rather than actually let's pursue help, you know? Yes. And, and so I, I think, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just having this, this like whole marketing plan thought in my mind of like those people that want different can't get answers from a system that is the same. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of patients that are like, why are all the good doctors like cash pay or private pay only? I'm like, well, because we don't get paid to ask those questions. Like, hey, do you feel safe right now? Hey, what, what changes can you make in your life that would just be one step at a time? Like you get paid for writing the script 
and sending them out the door. Like, you know, you don't get paid for actually investigation and, and whatnot. That is just, it's super interesting for me to think about like the nervous system of the medical, you know, the, the medical way of life is stuck in that state of, of freeze. And I wonder what the rock bottom is going to be to flip it on its head. I, I thought it was gonna be COVID. We keep on doing the same thing with COVID so far, but I mean, it's, it's, it's something has got to, in a sense, not necessarily break the system, but have the system hit rock bottom so that people start asking different questions and get a different perspective, you know? Yeah. And, and it's so interesting. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I told you, I, I wrote a book called Perspective, Rewire Your Brain for Success and Abundance. And literally everything that you just talked about is what I talked about in the beginning, where if your nervous system is stuck in a state of stress, you cannot have vision. If you, you can't cannot. live a life of vision, you're not going to be in a state of creativity. Therefore, you're not going to have core values because you're searching for anything that brings you stimulus, which exactly. means that you can't have a life of purpose because you're living for yourself rather than other people. And so walking people down this... Um, yep you know, kind of like timeline of like, let's fix the nervous system. Let's, let's get you off rock bottom. Let's look, you, let's get your eyes off of yourself and your immediate needs. And let's start looking at other people and other things. And then we can start building our purpose around what other people need rather than just what we need. Yep. And I, I yeah. love, go ahead. We, we need open space. We need, we need space to breathe. We need space to think. We need space to process things yeah. for us to be able to get into that space of even, can I think about other people? How can I be innovative? How can I be creative? And I, it, it's, it's not COVID that has broken our medical system, but it's going to be the, all of the health outcomes that are going to come out of the result of mm. COVID. Mm. that is going to be a huge wave, a tsunami wave that the yeah. current medical system with how it is built is not going to be able to handle. And that will be its rock bottom because right. here are going to be all these people with symptoms and conditions that do not have a CPT code diagnosis. Mm. And they won't be able to make them up fast enough. And they won't be able to make them up fast enough and they won't know what to do, but right. yet it's going to be so many people that they're going to have to figure out, we have to create a different model. Right, right. Mm -hmm. well, There's a Amy, huge tsunami wave of both mental health and physical health conditions coming oh, yeah. as a result of COVID. Absolutely, yeah. And and it's it's scary but exciting at the same time. Where it's like it's exactly gonna be people like us that are going to be able to to prop up. You know, it's like, hey, come on over. We'll teach you how to make changes and, and move on. We'll teach you how to make changes for people that want it, you know. Um, I think it would be super helpful, Dr. Amy, if, if there's people out there that are kind of like having this like head explosion where it's like, because you, you put it so so beautifully. It's like, man, I have been stuck in a state of, of freeze, you know. What, what are maybe two or three questions? Like, let's say a wife is listening to this and her husband just comes home, goes through the same routine over and over and over again. And she knows that if, if she says like, hey, like, have you thought about going and getting a beer with your, with your friends? Or have you thought about, it's just going to be like, oh, well, you think, you know, it's just going to come back with that worsening state of freeze. What are some questions that, that can engage in conversation rather than like the other person feeling like they're a, a disease or a problem that needs to be fixed that you maybe equip your, your patients or, you know, you teach your summit uh, you know, uh, followers and whatnot? Uh, great question. And I'm going to probably tell your audience something that will shock them <laughs> because, um, and I, and I, and I have all these guides written on the freeze response, which may be helpful for those people who really want to dig in deeper to this, but the freeze response needs time. Mm. It needs time and it needs space. The sympathetic, the stress response actually needs something different. It needs support. It needs community. But the freeze response actually just needs time. Mm. And what happens is that in our modern world, we're not given the time. Everything is rush, rush, rush. Everything yeah. is being thrown at us. And yeah. so then someone comes home, they're in this chronic freeze and here's just more stuff coming at them, right? Like the kids and decisions and whatever. And so honestly, honestly, the best thing that we can do for those people in our life who are in the freeze is just sit next to them. Mm. Don't say a thing. Do not say a thing because anything that you try to actually engage them, it's like you're, 
you are um, overwhelming them even more with stuff and, and their brain is just trying to like shut down and get the rest. And when mm -hmm. it has enough rest, it'll come out on its own. Mm -hmm. We're just never able to give it that pause, that space and that time that the nervous system needs to even have a chance to come out of the freeze. Yeah. So having them not feel alone is important. Sure. Having them feel safe is important. And that would be it, right? Like right. create a felt sense of safety in the relationship so that they feel safe with you and they don't feel like they have to push you away because you're bombarding them with wanting to talk mm. and asking them questions. Mm. Just sit next to them. Just, just sit next to them. And when they are ready, they will talk. So are you saying there's a difference between somebody stuck in freeze and stuck yes. in stress? Yes. So somebody if stuck in, in freeze and stress is very different. Yes. So if you could, if it takes a longer conversation, then we'll take, we'll start podcast, you know, part two. <laughs> um, but if, if, you know, so, so, so let's say a wife is like, okay, I can do that. Also, I didn't know there was freeze and stress. Like how, what are some maybe telltale signs of somebody stuck in a state of freeze versus stuck in a state of stress? Yeah. So stress is going to look like anxiety or anger. Hmm. And they're going to look like they are very hyper vigilant. I mean, it, it's a very high energy state. Mm -hmm. They are stressed. And so even just looking at their posture, how they're walking around, how they sit, they're going to be very upright. Chest is going to be out because their shoulders are going to be up. Like they are stressed. Mm. The freeze response looks like shame or overwhelm. Mm. And so when they sit down, you'll actually see their body collapse. Mm. Their head comes down. They fold over their stomach. They go into the posture of looking like they're exhausted. Mm. They're fatigued. Um, you get this, you know, very, very characteristic curvature of the spine that moves forward. Whereas the sympathetic and stress, no, they're upright and they're ready for a fight. Mm -hmm. And so just by looking at their posture, you can tell, like, does it look like they are carrying heaviness? Mm -hmm. Heaviness is the freeze response. Mm -hmm. And then listening to the words that they're saying, if they're using words like I'm exhausted uh, it's, it's all just, it's too much. Those are all words of the freeze response. And so you just know, okay, they're, they're in the freeze response right now. And that's again, so much of our society is, is certain degrees in the response. And so it's, it's a very common thing. And you might start looking around being like, well, shoot, like everybody's in freeze. And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this is a state where everybody at home is like shifting their posture. I'm not that way. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, and, well, what's the good posture? <laughs> right. What's the good posture? And I will just throw this tidbit out there, Dr. Bowman. Um, and, 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 and then we can maybe just let it sit and, and yeah. not need to go further into it. But there are certain features that are part of a chronic freeze state. And one of those is automatic obedience, mm. where you're going to just do what you're told to do. Mm. And you're not going to question things. Mm. You're not going to have the energy to think for yourself. Right. right. You're just going to go along with what you're being told. And that's nothing bad or wrong about that. That is actually just a characteristic of being in the freeze response. Mm. And, and again, I think that that's what we're seeing so much on a social level. Yeah. And, and that's so interesting. If you think about, you know, I'm, I'm married. You think about the dynamic of, of a marriage. You know, especially yeah. when a guy feels overwhelmed, he's had a long day at work, sat in traffic, comes home yeah. to crying kids, you know, and all the wife wants to do is just talk about the issues. And he's like, that's the last thing that I want to do yeah. right yeah, now. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? But the wife might be like, well, how am I pursuing him if I'm not asking him? You know, you get in the circular sort of thing. So I think exactly. You know, mm -hmm. what, what you said, like the difference in, in what's helpful and maybe yep. even just acknowledging that, you know? Yes. So, People that are out there that are, that are listening to this and, and you, you want to, you know, help by, by talking and, and working through these issues, whether it's your marriage or your friendship or, you know, whatever, you know, you, you can just say like, hey, I, I learned this new thing called being in a state of freeze where your body is overwhelmed. Does that, does that feel like you? Yeah, I feel overwhelmed. Okay. I'm really sorry for battering you with questions. I'm going to give you space. Let me know when you're ready. I, I, I bet you it's just the waterworks that would come. That, you know, or it's like, yes, exactly. Oh, 
how did you know that? Like, yes, you know, yes, um, yes. And so, then that creates such a felt sense of trust and safety in the relationship. Cause it's like, oh, they get me. They get me. Right. I can, oh, I've, I, I've got the space that I need. Right. Oh, they're my, they're my friend. They're, they're, they're supporting me rather than being my enemy because they're contributing to my overwhelm. Right. Right. Yeah. So good. Well, Dr. Amy, I'm sure people have more questions and answers at this point, um, but they have the important answers, which is the most important thing. Where can people find more about you? Where can people go get more resources to learn more about these things that you're talking about? Yeah, they can actually find me either just by searching. So um, dramy.com and I spell my name A-I-M-I-E or they can also find me at traumahealingaccelerated.com. So that is where they can come and find me and see, get get more guides, get more information, learn about this chronic freeze and and what, what trauma stored in the body and on the cellular level might look like. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an impactful episode. For sure. Um, I hope hundreds of thousands of millions of people listen because, you know, we could solve the world with just that conversation. It's like, let's, let's address freeze or l- let's, let's acknowledge freeze. Let's address it and then start living with vision because that gives you purpose, which then we can be creative in which we can then live in community. And so instead of slitting each other's throats, we can hold each other up. Yeah. And all of a sudden we have a world that's built on progress rather than yeah. I'm just trying to get better than everyone else. Yes, this, so. this could be uh, what changes the world. Right, what will change the world. <laughs> what will change the world. <laughs> Dr. Amy, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Dr. Bowman. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Perspective Podcast. To connect with Dr. Bowman, follow him on Instagram at Dr. Chris Bowman. Until next time, make shift happen.